I'm still with Isabel Oak, Shot Talks International Editor. Isabel, uh, we're just going to play uh, Keir Starmer and what he had to say about the farmers' uh, dispute uh, yesterday while he was, of course, many, many thousands of miles away in Rio de Janeiro, uh, Rio de Janeiro uh, uh, reinforcing his new nickname, Never Hear Keir. Uh, so <laughs> here is Never Hear Keir uh, talking about the agricultural row. On the question of inheritance tax, um, the, the example I've given is a typical example of um, parents wanting to pass on a farm uh, to one of their children. Um, and in those cases, when you look at all the thresholds available, that means that only farms over the value of three million pounds will be affected by the changes. And therefore the vast majority of farms will be unaffected. And those that are affected will only pay um, half the inheritance tax that other people pay, 20%, and they will have a 10-year period over which to pay it. Um, and so that's why I'm very confident in saying um, that the vast majority uh, will not be affected. How farmers then arrange their uh, affairs within their family is obviously a matter uh, for them. Well, Isabel, I, I say uh, he's either completely confused by all of this or he's just flat-out lying. Uh, there have been claims from within government circles that as few as 500 farms are affected by this inheritance tax. And by the way, I don't know where he got £3 million from. We all know the threshold is £1 million. Farms worth more than £1 million will be affected by this new 20% inheritance tax. Uh, uh, either way, so if it's as few as 500 farms, my question would be, what is the point of the policy? It's going to raise peanuts. Uh, yeah. I don't think it's anywhere near as few as that. However, tr tr Rachel Reeves and the Treasury, they say, oh, it's not that many. It's only 27% of farms. Uh, there are 209,000 farms in this country. So 27% of that is about 60,000 farms. That's not... Uh, the so the vast majority of farms uh, uh, will be affected by this. So they say 27%. Uh, the Prime Minister said the vast majority won't be affected. The Farmers' Union say 66% will be affected. Uh, and uh, privately, DEFRA, the Ministry uh, for Environment and Farming, they concur. They're at war with the Treasury saying stop trying to get us to spin that only 27% will be affected because the farmers union are right it's two thirds uh, so uh, around 60 to 70,000 farms will be affected even by uh, the treasury even by Rachel Reeves's figures uh, by uh, DEFRA and the farming union's figures uh, that will be uh, something like, uh, what's that, uh, about uh, 180,000 farms. So, so, you know, either these people, some of them must be lying, uh, they can't get their story right, uh, and uh, this is just chaos, this is just a mess. And even if all these farms were paying this inheritance tax, it wouldn't raise that much money. I believe this policy, just like the winter fuel allowance axing, is ideological. It is the Labour Party. They hate rural people. They hate farmers. They hate old people because none of them vote Labour. That's what I think this is all about. And but like my last point, sorry to uh, harp on, but I think what we saw yesterday, that extraordinary demonstration, it wasn't 10,000 people. It was 20,000 minimum. Uh, a lot of people think 40,000. That wasn't just the farmers protesting. That was a crescendo of protest from all sections of, cons of society. A lot of townies there as well. And this was a massive protest protest against a gormless government, an incompetent government that is doing this country wrong. Yeah, I mean, I know lots of people who turned out to that very peaceful, sensible, respectful demonstration yesterday in the worst of weathers. And these are people who are not themselves farmers. 
people of all ages who feel really profoundly sympathetic to what farmers are being subjected to, to the absolute drubbing that they got in that recent budget of Rachel Reeves and just so, so incredibly moved by, you know, the plight of some of these landowners who are not wealthy, you know, yes, on paper, their farms are worth whatever they're worth, but they're only worth that if you sell them. And these are people whose way of life it is to work the land, to, to rear those animals and to produce food for the nation. And I think you only have to look at the scale of the number of people who turned up yesterday um, to, to see that this isn't a minority issue. It's something that really has struck a chord. And as for Keir Starmer saying that farmers will have 10 years to pay, well, um, let me tell you, because I'm going through this at the moment with my own uh, late parents' uh, assets, that with inheritance tax, yes, on paper, you've got 10 years to pay, but do you know what the rate of interest is? You know, prior to this budget, the rate of interest was 7.75%. Oh. They've just hiked that up, and I think it's probably near a 10 now. I mean, that is thousands of pounds a month on mm. a significant um, mm. land holding, not, not that we had any uh, farm or anything. But, you know, for Keir to, for Keir to say, oh, well, it's all right, you've got 10 years to pay, Look at the punitive interest payments on that. Unless they've made an exception for the farmers, and I very much doubt they have, the interest rates mm. make that 10-year thing a really terrible way to spread the cost. But e even if, uh, you know, the, the, fo the government figures are right, e e even if the uh, it's 27% of farms, as I say, that would be about 60, 70,000 70, yeah. pounds. Even if it's what DEFRA and uh, the uh, Farmers Union say, which would be, you know, uh, 170,000 farms, this inheritance tax that the government makes out of it, it's, it's not that much. It's not that much in the great scheme of things, just like the axing of the winter fuel allowance for poor old freezing pensioners will make a paltry £1.4 billion. So you think, why is this government, uh, for the sake of a few pence uh, in the great scheme of things, for peanuts in the great scheme of things, imposing on an increasingly furious population these astronomically unpopular po policies? Why are they doing it? Because, as you say, it is ideological. Inheritance tax is fundamentally ideological. It doesn't raise very much. You know, it used to only raise about three, three to four billion, only not that many years ago. Let's say 10 years ago, it raised three to four billion. The reason it now raises a few billion more is because so many people have been dragged into it by rising property prices. You know, an awful lot of people who are far from wealthy are dragged into paying inheritance tax. The thresholds are pathetically low. Many, many countries in the world have no inheritance tax at all, and quite rightly so. You look at America, um, there are only a handful of states that have heavy inheritance taxes. Many uh, have no inheritance tax at all, and they're actually competing with each other states to get rid of it because there's an awful lot of administration. In the US, generally, you're only paying inheritance tax if you've got assets worth $20 million, something like that. Well, I think we can all agree that's sort of fair enough. But, you know, when it's just elderly people leaving one big house, you know, it's horrible to have to carve all of that up to and go through the misery of all the form filling for a revenue raiser that really doesn't move the dime in terms of any kind of black hole that Rachel Reeves claimed there may be. Yeah, and uh, just a last point on this before we move on. Uh, it was a window into uh, Rachel's uh, tortured little socialist psyche when she said, well, you know, these farmers all complaining about uh, inheritance tax and everything, you know, well, how else are we going to pay for the NHS and public services? In other words, that's her league table, isn't it? You know, never mind the farmers, never mind the private sector. The private sector and the farmers Farmers, uh, we are here to pay for her beloved public services and her beloved NHS. That's what this is all about. It is the uh, uh, the moving 
of uh, money from the private sector to Labour's beloved public sector. And uh, we're going to go to Helena Hancock because of this. Uh, her policies, frankly, Rachel from accounts, are just hopeless, absolutely hopeless. And I really, really wish uh, we've established she lies about all sorts of things, but she's got to stop lying about her career. Uh, Lee Anderson calling her Rachel from accounts. I mean, she's just a liar. She's a liar. I mean, and I can say that she can't. She can't. Uh, she can't hit back because it's true. She lied about her career. She wasn't an economist at the Halifax Bank of Scotland. Uh, she didn't uh, work as an economist at the Bank of England for ten years. It was only six. You know, why? Why are we supposed to trust these people? I was a junior cha chess champion. No, you weren't. You came twenty ninth. Unbelievable.